can you tell me a little bit about yourself and, and what motivated you to start the company? Okay, so um, I'm originally a nurse from the UK. Uh, all my family are nurses, all the females in the family are nurses. Um, that is just what uh, we were all destined to be. Um, so there's a lot of uh, uh, caring and empathy and social responsibility in the family and what we've grown up with. Um, I left the UK, moved to Australia and became a director of nursing and CEO of two private hospitals at a relatively early age. Set up um, a range of businesses, sold them, uh, set up another healthcare company, listed that, and then that gave me the capital to uh, invest in Sydney Breast Clinic in 2004. And the reason um, women's health is such a, a priority for me is I ran two private hospitals in um, probably the poorest areas of Sydney. And I knew that if you were diagnosed with breast cancer or ovarian cancer, uh, this is in the late 90s, that you would, everybody would have a mastectomy. You know, there was no choice. And it would take about 12 weeks before you'd start any sort of clinical treatment, chemotherapy, radiotherapy. If you lived in some of the other areas of Sydney, the more um, wealthy areas, you got better access, it was quicker, and ultimately your survivability rates were high were a lot higher so that was always a bone of contention for me and the, the inequity and inequality so when um, I got the capital set up a, uh, a small foundation by you know standards um, I then bought into Sydney Breast Clinic with Ron Phillips he's an ex-minister for health in New South Wales highly regarded and we were both aligned in our principles about trying to make a difference for women's health. Now, Sydney Breast Clinic was previously owned by a health insurance company. And what that clinic did in the early 2000s, if you had a lump, you had breast radiologists, breast cytologists, breast surgeons and breast physicians. It was a comprehensive multidisciplinary team and they would uh, basically diagnose cancer one day and you could start your treatment the second. I mean, it was fast tracking. So at that stage, it was pioneering, it was leading. Um, it, it wasn't an attractive area for people to invest in. The clinic lost money. Um, historically, it's, it's capital intensive, resource intensive with all those specialists. And there was the legal liability issue if you missed cancers. So it was an area that However, if we go to today, uh, 2020 in Sydney, there, there are about four or five multidisciplinary clinics. So we, we were away ahead of our time. And um, at that stage, because we were the center of excellence, we were doing some clinical trials with a company there that, were, that was trying to develop markers for breast cancer. That company went broke, it became insolvent. So Ron and I thought, well, early diagnosis, a blood test, that is ultimate, um, the ideal. Uh, we know 50% of women um, elect not to have mammograms 50 plus, and for women under 40, it's still the good old hand, unless you um, go for MRI, which many women don't. So um, Ron and I then sold um, Sydney Breast Clinic to um, a larger organization. We took the science um, we were still very, I'm still very involved with Sydney Breast Clinic. Um, and so we took the science and developed BCAL Diagnostics about 11 years ago now. If you were going to say what problems it addresses, what does it address? Well, it, it, the number one problem is it, it will provide a, a screening tool for all women everywhere on breast cancer. So that there are many reasons why women don't screen, self-select, well, at the moment, as we discussed earlier, under 40s, it's still your hands, self-examination. I've got two daughters. I know how embarrassing and painful it is talking about my children's breasts, never mind anybody else's. And women uh, 50 plus in, uh, in Australia, a lot of women self-select not to have mammograms. It's painful, cultural reasons, geographical reasons, um, expense accessibility so if you have a blood test that can screen it will give peace of mind hopefully 
capture cancer earlier and ultimately prevent women from, dance, from dying from breast cancer. That's the, that's the goal. Can you put in very simple terms, kind of like you're speaking to, um, you know, 10th graders in, in high school, what exactly does your, um, does your innovation do? This test will allow us to diagnose earlier and start the treatment earlier. Can you, can you give me a case use example of how somebody would benefit from this? There's, there's actually, there's only four areas. So at, at the moment, it's for, uh, you know, for women that have actually had breast cancer, um, they go once a, once a year or regularly for uh, an appointment with their oncologist. If there is a test that can monitor that five year post treatment, that will give women po uh, what, that will give women peace of mind for women that have had treatment. So that's ongoing monitoring for women that have um, have had aunts, sisters, mothers uh, have breast cancer under forty. That screening again will give women peace of mind. It's like going for your regular Pap smear. So, that, so there's that application as well. And then there's another group of women, which, which I was only aware of when I actually went out pitching for money. And that is in the Jewish community. A lot of women yes. have the BRCA1, BRCA2 gene. And a lot of women have elective mastectomies from 19. But if those women have got access to a test, it means they can keep the breasts longer, breastfeed, if they choose to, after they've had the children, keep the breasts, you know, fine. But at least there's another tool. So we've had a lot of interest from the Jewish community purely for that reason. And then the, the other area is have a blood test. You know, men have a PSA test. Not that that's very accurate. There's, you know, the poo test for, col you know, coloscopy, uh, colon cancer. So this would provide screening for all women everywhere and I think would give peace of mind to all those aspect, potential aspects. What are the biggest challenges that you see ahead? Many challenges. It's going to be the roller coaster ride. I think, um, you know, in terms of, for me, and I think this is because it's an area that I'm not familiar with, but there's many experts out there and we've, we've spoken to a few of them. And that's taking the test from a, um, from a laboratory into the commercial. Uh, space. Um, there's now lots of robotics. Uh, Mass spec has, uh, is now standardized practice in the pathology labs. Um, reimbursement will probably be an issue because we want it for all women everywhere. Um, and, you know, a lot of women can pay for it. Um, a lot of women can't, and they're probably the women that probably need it most. So it would be to get the test of the, uh, the cost of the test um, at a, at a, you know, low price that gives a win-win for everybody. So again, it's balancing the commercial um, aspects of the test. Um, I'll probably need, uh, I am very commercial normally, but in this one, the uh, emotive side gets sometimes a bit involved. So it's basically commercialization of the test. They will be the challenges ahead. I think one of the key issues for us is attracting the, the right people having the right management competencies and skill set who are aligned to execute the vision. Um, you know, we can't pay the mega bucks that other organizations can do, um, but we want high quality people. Do you have anything else that you'd like to leave us with? Um, I think I've, I think I've shared a lot. I think I think we're aligned in our values and our goals. We're in it for the right reasons. We're not all in it just to, as I said earlier. I think it's very important people make a commercial return, but there's a balance there in getting this test to market. So uh, I think um, you know getting the right partnerships at a capital level is very important, and we were very fortunate in the early days. If we'd have had investors that couldn't go with us for the 11-year journey. Um, this test wouldn't be where it is now. Thank you for watching The Lowdown on Cancer presented by the Cancer Fund. To learn more about what's coming in future episodes, visit us at www.cancerfund.com. While you're there, check out past episodes and be sure to click join us to become a member of the Cancer Fund community. 
As a member of the community, you'll receive early access to new interviews, as well as other announcements. Make sure to connect to all of our social media channels so you don't miss a thing. In addition to getting early access to new episodes of The Lowdown on Cancer, Cancer Fund members play a critical role in driving cancer innovation forward so that one day we can more than hope we can actually beat cancer. Thank you for joining us on this journey.